Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 337. Each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the SEO, the Dumb SEO Questions uh, Facebook group. With us tonight, uh, we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Um, he's based uh, in the UK, um, resides in Wimbledon. He's also a Google product expert on the uh, AdSense uh, community. Richard Hearn. Richard, I, I just read uh, on Google uh, just a second ago that Richard was interviewed by John Mueller back in 2007 and uh, still sits on uh, one of uh, John's uh, website. Richard deals in upper echelon uh, sites, uh, news and so on. He's based, uh, uh, he can be found on the web at redcardinal.ie. Uh, I should have said Masataki is also available at wasaweb.net. Um, but yes, you'll find Richard in either Thailand or Ireland. In Corby, 100 miles north of London, you'll find Tim Kappa. Uh, Tim is uh, a, a Google product expert um, in the Google My Business uh, community. And I think that's all of us. All right, let's um, get cracking. We have 17 questions on our run list tonight. Um, our first one is from Saurabh Rawat. Um, it's titled From Subdomain to Subdirectory. Uh, Saurabh said, if I change my 600K pages from subdomain to subdirectory, will it help me to improve ranking? Don't you guys go fighting over this? Right, I'll I'll answer a little bit because I've answered in the thread. Uh, I would never try to start redirecting six hundred thousand pages from a subdomain to a subdirectory unless I had a very clear definition of what I wanted to achieve, and I would be very very careful about what I was moving, as in what is the content that was on the sub subdomain. Could it impact the content that's currently on on the main domain? Um, and generally speaking, if you're just moving this because you think you're going to get a ranking benefit, it would really depend on who you are because that sort of move is it's not a small move, and it, chances are it would take Google a hell of a long time to figure it all out if they ever figure it all out. Because if your site doesn't have a lot of page rank, they may never crawl some of the deeper stuff if it's a deep structure. Um, Generally speaking, I'd be very, very reluctant to, to advise to do this unless he could tick a lot of boxes in terms of, of what the potential upside was. Yeah. I must say I, I liked uh, Andrew Simpson's um, response, which you can see on the screen there now, Richard. Uh, it's just under yours uh, in from the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, get gun, shoot self in foot. All right. I think that pretty well sums it up for Saurabh. And uh, let's move on to the number two on our run list. From Adrian Robert, it's titled, Do I use, Need to Use Subdomains for Each City? Uh, Adrian said, Hi, folks. I have a question. I need your help. For SEO purposes, is it better to have um, uh, via room brackets dot oh it's okay vr room dot fr um slash paris vr room dot fr slash marseille um gee i don't know i don't know um vr room dot fr slash nont no, anyway, or the city is a subdomain like Paris dot um, VR room dot FR. 
I need your SEO expertise on this. Thanks. And I'm hoping for Adrian's sake that uh, your answer is better than my read. Sorry about that. Well, I... Um, why are you, you know, like, what's the question? Well, firstly, you don't need a subdomain. But I honestly, I mean, what are you doing with with these? Um, so, yeah, you can have pages for, you know, Marseille and Paris and what, but what is, what? what's the purpose? Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to get at Um Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah um. well he doesn't he doesn't say that he doesn't tell us to him what 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 his goal is I mean you know depending on his goal there may be some purpose behind this but uh, he's saying uh, the client of mine is spreading activities in new cities and he wants people to book for the virtual room stuff for each city well you know fine but you know that's that's a category so you know, think, think, just think of um, any hotel kind of uh, uh, booking site. Yeah, you know, you have a top line category for Paris. You have all your um, apartments listed that are in Paris, in the Paris category, and then you can uh, you book that. Then if people come in and search, oh, I'm looking for an apartment in Marseille, Marseille, you know, it takes you to that category, and um, but you are going to need to use a category for that particular. Um, uh, you know, for that particular page, but um, like I, I don't think he's gonna he's gonna derive any any. SEO benefit from putting it on a sub putting each city on a subdomain. That's like to answer that question. I think the only thing that I, where I could see there could be potential advantage would be from an infrastructure point of view in the back end, where it would be easier if one city got busy to to put that onto a you know a different box, different infrastructure by using subdomains. But from an SEO perspective, I don't think he's going to get any benefit. I think he'd be much better off putting it all into one site. And just allowing whatever whatever sort of linking signals he can get coming into the site to dwell within the site, and not have to share it off onto subdomains, and be worried about internal linking between subdomains and cross linking, and then all the rest of it. Um, I really don't see any benefit. I really, even from a business perspective, I can't really see much benefit from putting it onto subdomains. Yeah, and it feels like much more work as well. Yeah. And that the added complications mean that there are more chances for things to go wrong as well. So yeah. unless there's a really good reason, you know, whether it's business or infra, you know, whether in terms of business decision or infrastructure, I really can't see that there would be any sort of substantial or or perhaps even any difference mm. in opting for subdomains. Yes, yeah, so I, I wonder if somebody's done a recent case study on subdomains. There's certainly a little bit of interest to, in them right now. But I, I'm I, I'm I'm um, a fan of uh, the advice that's been given, um, and. Um, Let's move on to number three on our run list. This one is, oh, this is a simple one. How to make a guest post from Jose, Josu Sanchez and Alda. He said, I've got a dumb SEO question. When you make a, a guest post, does it mean that you should write an article only for another website? Or does it mean another website takes one of your articles and copies it to their page, putting a link to the original at the end? I hope it was clear. Uh, thank you. Um, just correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Um, the uh, second scenario is, is what it means that for a guest post that you place this uh, article on, on another 
site and uh, usually in the same niche as your website and it has a link in on, on that page or a number of links uh, leading back to your site. Um, is that f a fair enough um, assessment there? Excellent. Let's uh, move on. Um, and it's number four on our run list. This one from Saurabh Rawat, using a plus sign in the URL. Um, and Saurabh said, does Google have an issue if I use a plus sign in the URL? Um, and he gives an example there where uh, uh, the URL contains uh, a plus uh, and uh, Rich, Richard Hearn, uh, bre brevity, uh, um, he's, he was the first to answer with the single word no. Um, but you know what, right, Hank, just, just thinking about it, right? So this is why I wrote in the first question about where I've heard about these 600,000 pages. Now, assuming these are the same 600,000 that he wanted to move from a subdomain into a subdirectory, I can say one thing he definitely should not do. He should not change the URL pattern if he's going to migrate from the sub subdomain into the subdirectory. He should migrate first and then maybe at a later point, maybe change the patterns within the URLs uh, because uh, it'd be a recipe, I think, for complexity if he tries to do two things at once. Yeah. All right, well, we've got 17 to do tonight, so uh, let's say that uh, um, four down and uh, 13 to go. Number five on our run list from Josu Sanchez and Alda um, on get a good ranking without links. Uh, he said, let's say in my page I have page A where I give free information and page B where I sell my services. Will page B, I, I can't, I just can't bring myself to, to say money page. Um, will page B get good positions in rankings without uh, links? If page A with free information gets many links from many sources. Of course, in page A, there is an internal link to page B, but I think it's not enough to make uh, page uh, B. Um, rank well let me know your opinion uh, are there any any case studies on this just like to point out people like stockbridge uh, truslow and uh, michael martinez uh, um, Michael, um, Crichter, oh, oh dear, I don't know. My brain is just failing me. Um, anyway, the, the, the people that um, spend time uh, on our Dumb SEO Questions uh, Facebook group and uh, provide answers uh, first, as soon as, as soon as the questions appeared through the week, um, it, it's it's so, so valuable to every all the participants and uh, um, so grateful. I'm just going to jump in and just say, like I know that people are saying to him, okay, well, look, you just got to you got to you know ensure that you've got some way to bring the people from page A on, into page B, whether you you know you stick CTAs or promos or whatever on it. But coming back to the original question, like. When you work with sort of high authority sites, okay, you start to realize that uh, when they've got an awful lot of page rank within the site, they can put up a page, there'll be no external links to it, and it can rank well. So, you know, if you can get enough good links into page A, and page A links in a, in a reasonable way to page B, uh, there's every chance that page B will start to rank for keywords or rank higher for keywords as you get better links to page A. I mean, that's just, it's pretty common knowledge. There may be reasons, there could be some filters you could hit that would, that would pose that, but in general, if you get some good links into page A, page B is going to rise also. Thank you, Richard. 
Okay, let's uh, move on to number six on our run list. Uh, this uh, is from Christopher Shin. Schema data markup question. He said, when we have both, comma, um, TLD and top level domain and mobile dot uh, mm dot uh, top level domain versions of a website. Do we need to upload two different versions of JSON-LD organization data markup? Um, one for the PC version and one for the mobile version. Yeah, I would assume yes. They should be, you know, they should be the same. But of course, if you're running an M dot, there would be slight differences. So your the URL, the URLs listed in your um, organization data um, would be slightly different because one would be for the desktop, one would be for um, uh, mobile. Um, what else? Um, that one that that to that one, that one depends on how you're set up. It depends on whether you're targeting Google, okay? Because if you have a desktop site, okay, and if you've got your M, M dot site set up as the rel alternate, so the Google, if you're canonicalizing your M dot to your dub 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 to your desktop, okay, which you would do if your mobile version was the, the rel alternate, then what you're putting into your JSON will actually should reflect what's on the desktop site. It's a bit of a messy situation, actually, with some of this stuff now. And it's going to get messier, I'd say, as they change to a, a mobile first world. Um, but actually, it is quite, it can be quite tricky. It depends on what you're doing with the, with the M dot site. If it is set as the rel alternate, then I think you, you, you would be putting in the desktop URLs in your, in your JSON. Certainly, the sites I work with, that's, that's how they're set up. Now, they do things a little bit differently because on top of having a mobile version, their mobile version is AMP HTML. So they set the AMP version as the rel alternate. Um, it's a pretty edge sort of scenario. It's not, it's not a, a vanilla type scenario. But what you do then is a little bit different because you have to set your canonical to the desktop version. The desktop has to, has to link to the rel alternate mobile version. And then you've got to set up the same schema on both. Thank you, Richard. There could be cases where a team is right. Like I'm not not saying that. I'm just saying there are certainly exceptions to this. It's not. It's not always clear cut, and actually, it's quite easy probably to 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 mix some of this stuff up. Like I mean, even I I had to go and have a look quickly and just make sure I was I wasn't imagining things. Yeah. All right, let's uh, charge on to number seven on our run list. Uh, from E. Dieter Martin, uh, 301 redirect between domains is the title. Uh, he said, I have a, a sumblog.com domain and a sumblog.net domain with a 301 redirect back to the .com domain. The idea was to keep others from claiming the .net domain. Nowadays, with all of the extra TLDs, it doesn't seem to be much of an issue to me anymore. Are there any other SEO or other reasons to keep um, keep forwarding it? Um, the forward has um, been in place um, for uh, um, more than uh, 10 years. Um, and uh, he did clarify, he said, um, let it, he said, let me rephrase, are there disadvantages to dropping it? So should he keep it or drop it? I suppose the question is whether there was any content on the .NET at any time during this period. Or he just simply always had .com site. The content was always in .com. He also bought the .NET domain and forwarded the dot net in which in, in that case then i can't you know, 
you can keep it, you can drop it. I don't think there really isn't much um, to talk about, as it were. But if you had content on .NET at some point during the past 10 years or even before, then given how much it costs nowadays to keep a .NET domain registered, I'd keep it. Thank you, Mr. Taki. All right, let's charge on to number eight on our run list um, from Mark X Quadros. Um, he said, what's the implication of changing categories? Um, he said, I've got a category called content marketing that I would like to change to online marketing as I don't want to create an additional category. I suppose most CMSs, if he changes the category name, it'll probably change the category slug, which will mean that he'll therefore change URLs and he'll need to redirect the old URL to the new URL. Um, I would say he's better off creating new category. If he doesn't want to keep anything in, in content marketing, then redirect it over to the new category. If he wants to keep content marketing, just create another category for online marketing and put some you know some posts in there uh, I wouldn't waste too much time on this yeah yes anybody else before we move on number nine on our run list from Scott Clark um, it's titled Google seems to ignore X robots tag uh, no index. Uh, he said, have any of you had cases where Google seems to completely uh, ignore X robots tag no index? I think Google Search Console is your best friend here. You just live test the page, have a look in the header section, and make sure that they're actually seeing the headers that you're setting. If you have anything in intermediate in the way, like a CDN or something like Fastly or Cloudflare, you've got to be careful that they don't strip out your headers and add in their own. I've seen that happen before. Um, so I think I wrote that in the comment, just be careful about what might be in between you and Google that, that, that might be actually changing your headers. It might look fine to you, but Googlebot might be getting something completely different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Richard, uh, and thank you, Masataki. Um, all right, uh, number ten on our run list um, from Matthias Pantelanius, uh, a Canadian SEO, um, who's asked a number of questions of us. This one is titled "Authorship Markup: How and Why." Uh, are any of you still using any authorship markup? If so, how? And why? I'm going to guess that you'd be daft to take this away. They may not have this authorship program anymore, but you know what? They're growing their knowledge graph constantly. They're constantly coming up with new features based on, on entities and the knowledge graph. And it's Probably, unless I'm getting this completely wrong, um, is he, I presume he's talking about schema or structured markup in some way, is he? Or is he talking about something else? He might be talking about the Google Plus one. Remember that used to exist. In the header. It was a link in the header, wasn't it? In the head. Yeah. Yeah, no, that one, that one is, that one. <laughs> if that's the one he's talking about, I, I wouldn't even serve it. I wouldn't waste the few bytes that it takes to serve it up. But if he's talking about like structured markup, as in, you know, structured data, schema.org stuff, I would definitely uh, give Google as many pointers as you can that explains to them who the author of a piece of, a piece of work is. Um, you know, this whole thing about sort of eat 
that came along that's a you know quite popular in the last sort of 12 months or more um chances are that they're using some of something from their knowledge graph to figure out as well about authority and who's an authority and what yeah Okay, Matthias, um, I hope um, that's what you're looking for. Um, Rodrigo Bueno asked the question. It's titled, I need to boost my page ranking. Well, um, he said, gentlemen, uh, if you need to boost a service page page authority within a short period of time, how would you, how, how would you make in order to to look natural, specifically in terms of link diversity. I'm not sure if this is the, 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 the group for Rodrigo, but um, let me see what else he said. He said, assuming getting four, plus 40 domain authority is not an issue, assume budget is not an issue. Oh, yes, I remember this one. Tim Kappa said, uh, so if you're still thinking in terms of uh, PA and DA and buying links, um, you need to go back to the drawing board. Um, Stockbridge Trustlow obviously agreed with Tim, um, but what does he mean by QFT? Oh, well. I'll have to look, look up the Urban Dictionary later on. Um, anyway, no, I, I thought that was a reasonable answer from Tim. Um, let's um, go to number 12 on our run list. Paul Karelius um, asked a question that's titled, uh, how do you optimise a page for keywords? Um, he goes on to say, when there are two strong variants of the word, say, backpack and rucksack. You guys are all still here, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Ah, good. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think some of the answers there, I mean, it's, you know, you use synonyms, you use, you know, you use both the keywords on the page, if it makes sense. Um, you know, you should really keep to one page when it's just synonyms like this, I think. So uh, if there is, a, I mean, I'm not, I'm, not a, I, I'm not an expert on these things. So if they're significantly different, you know, a backpack and a rucksack, well, then he could potentially make different pages. Well, I think it's an, it, it's an opportunity to use uh, the two pages. Um, and, um, of course, the internal linking would, would be cross-linking um, as well. Um, yeah, a missed opportunity if you don't use two pages, I think. Okay, let's move on to number 13. Unlucky for some from Trey Kellier. Trey Collier, I should say. Undo the 301 redirect. Um, Trey said, an e-commerce site stops selling products from a manufacturer. They 301 redirect to other similar products or uh, to a close category. Two years later, the manufacturer and uh, the retailer make up. Can they undo the, the 301 redirect of those pages and make to make them live again or better to create or is it better to create all new URLs? Yeah, I just remove the 301 redirect and update, you know, obviously update the page if there's been any changes. Um, you know, there might be some slight changes to put up. Yeah, so remove the 301 and update the page accordingly. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's go to number 14 on our run list. Um, Mark X Quadros again. 
um, on AMP pages for B2B software as a service website, business to business software as a service websites. Um, and that, that was the title. Um, this Mark yeah, goes on to ask, would you recommend AMP pages? No. Um, he said, I have a client that, that gets 60% of their traffic through mobile, but has an 85% um, bounce rate. They're trying to build a blog and, and shift towards um, enterprise companies. Um, and um, he said, I'm currently working on fixing their mobile responsive pages, but I'm considering pitching an AMP version of their website. They have about 60 posts and plan to publish a, a lot more. So maybe this is a good idea. I'll be using uh, the WordPress AMP uh, plugin with the uh, customization and Google Analytics integration. Would love to get some insight. With 60 pages on the site, I just don't think it's worth the hassle. Yeah, I'd agree there. I think it also, you could say that you, you really want to know what type of content they're, they're, they're creating because, I mean, there could potentially be some content that might fit well. Like if it was newsworthy content, they could get listed as a news publisher. You could then maybe say there could be an argument for putting on an AMP plugin or something so that they could get into some of the, the news features that are pretty much dominated by AMP. Um, you know, there, there could be some edge cases where it might make sense, but in general, probably not. It's, like if you're not a news site, it's probably not going to do you that much good. Yeah, and isn't there sort of false dichotomy in here in that he's thinking that um, pitching AMP instead of fixing the mobile version whereas you know if you're going to fix the mobile version and offer amp that's a different proposition if that makes sense yeah See? but he could also just put out amp pages and use them as, a, as his as his mobile version i mean like that that you know i mean there's pros and cons to that and of course then you're into the design issues and making sure you've got menus and navigations and the rest um it doesn't sound like the type of site he's working on is at that level, so he's probably not going to get much benefit from turning on AMP, as Tim said. Okay. All right, let's uh, call uh, this one uh, number 14 um, answered, and let's move on to number 15 on our run list from... Faris L. Mountaser, um, it's on rebranding to a new website domain. Um, Faris said, uh, hello, guys. Thanks for accepting. He said, now I have a serious, uh, you're welcome, by the way, Faris. Uh, he said, now I have a serious issue. I'm rebranding to a new website domain and it just verified both domains ownership through DNS in Google Search Console. But as I do not want to lose link juice from old URLs, I want to inform Google with uh, about the website change. But they say that this feature is only available at the old Search Console. When I click um, the, um, the old Search Console, it takes me to a page where I should uh, re-sign up and then takes me to the new Search Console. I'm really stuck. Uh, any uh, suggestions on how to use change, the change of address tool will be appreciated. He, he mentioned that later on that he's doing research and that they've discontinued the change of address tool. I don't think that's true. Does anyone know? I'd be very surprised if they discontinue it because it actually... You know, changing a domain, if you follow all the steps that they they give you, it, it normally works quite well. And I would suspect that if you didn't have that tool, as in if there wasn't a way for them to, or for you to report to them that you're changing domains, it would probably take a lot longer for them to figure out that actually this is a full domain change and not just lots of 301 redirects. So, like, I don't know what the problem is that he's having. 
and and God help him, I feel sorry for him because I'd say when you have a problem like that, you clear your cookies, you use incognito window, it still does it. Um, you're pretty shafted. I don't know who you're going to ask for help in that case because you ain't going to get it, I don't think. So I don't know, but he'd want to find a way to get in there because the tool will definitely help. Otherwise, if he just goes with 301s, as if some other people said, I'd say he better be very clear to expect that his traffic is going to decline while Google tries to figure it all out, and it's going to take a lot longer to sort itself out than if he than it would do had he been able to use the change of address tool. Yep, we'll, we'll call it an answer, the subject to investigation. Um, number 16 um, on our run list from Job and John. Uh, how do you silo your site structure? Uh, Jobin said, I saw this question on another group. I thought I would ask it here to see what you guys think. Uh, how do you silo your site structure? Um, do you do page and then categories? Um, what is the best practice for a silo structure? For example, uh, I have pages for home decor, organising and lifestyle. Then I made categories to go under these pages. Uh, um, such uh, as uh, my home decor has a DIY, a do-it-yourself home de decor, and how to paint. I'm a bit confused about this whole silo thingy. Well, essentially. If you, you know, most CMSs, you know, you create natural silos. So if you've got your home decor section and within your home decor, you then have um, cushions, curtains and carpets and it's in the home decor and you use your home decor as your parent page and then you use those as child pages. It puts it into a natural silo so it'll be forward slash you know curtains or etc uh, etc et puts that into a silo if you didn't have this then you know you would you would then you know you want you want to help search engines understand uh, where things belong so in your home decor, if you're, for example, you didn't have the ability to create, you know, um, particular category pages and, and pages within those categories, um, you could then say, specifically call them home decor carpets, um, and then interlink that page to the home decor um, page. So everything is, you know, falling within a natural silo of um, what your top line is, what the top um, category is, and what is fitting within that. So you're not going to have a carpet section for, you know, the DIY. It, it I mean, I suppose you, you could, but that carpet DIY page is then going to link to the DIY and it's going to be completely different because the carpet for the DIY is going to how to prep it, how to do the floor, how to lay it, uh, where can you get the tools, the whatever the case may be. And that's going to interlink to the DIY section and not the actual home decor section. So, you know, you, you, can, you can do it without actually structuring it like that, but most CMSs allow you to structure it properly. But he said, essentially, it's um, topics, you know, and everything that fits within that topic typically falls within a silo. And, and, and that's, you know, a silo is straight up and everything fits within. You have a top and then everything that, that helps build it out. Thank you, Tim. I said we've just been joined by Micah Fisher Kirshner. Micah uh, um, is um, president of a meetup group um, 
uh, on the west coast uh, of the USA. He's also uh, um, director of SEO for Turn River Capital. All right, let's go to number 17. Another one from Mark's, uh, Mark X Quadros. Um, it, it's question 17. Should I no index pagination? Um, he said, hey, so I'm currently auditing my first site and I'm going to have a bunch of dumb questions. Question one, should I no index pagination? As my client has a bunch of uh, pagination index. Uh, no. Uh, at least not for the first, uh, let's say five, ten pages, whatever it's kind of he feels sufficient. Uh, the reason behind that is if you know index um, paginated pages, then those pages will eventually become no followed, which in turn um, means essentially that Google won't crawl them anymore. And if your internal linking structure is not exactly uh, the best, um, a lot of those pages once they fall off from the first set of pages, won't be seen anymore. So it's a good way to at least keep some of your uh, uh, content in there available uh, for Google to see. Um, so that's that's kind of one of the things to keep keep in mind about. And it, 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 there are ways that you can at least make it make them less. So if, if you feel there are too many. Uh, paginated pages, then you just put more pages within, mm -hmm. more links to pages within said paginated page, and you can reduce the amount that way. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's something that I wouldn't really know index unless it's pretty far deep. Um, and even then, the likelihood of Google really crawling through a lot of those pages oftentimes is not that high. And for smaller level sites, it's probably not the biggest issue in the world. Am I alone in thinking that it's not unreasonable to be slightly angry that Google never told anyone about that change they made? You know, this, was, uh, this was a, a day where they sort of sneakily slipped out near the I'd say more than anything else. Yeah. yeah and they exactly. did apologize at least though. Oh, we forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I thought was, we mentioned it. <laughs> It's sort of like the rail neck and rail previous as well. I mean, that was. I mean, there's still documentation that actually refers to rail next and rail previous. Certainly in the structure uh, section of the developer docs, they still mention about using rail next, rail previous. So it's hard to know who's using it and who's not. And sometimes one part of Google will say something, but it may not apply to another part of Google. Who knows? The, yeah, the, that's, I mean, big companies like that, that happens. Yeah, of course, of course. It's normal. It's, it's, not, it's, not, a, it, it's not atypical for things like that to happen. The, the bit about adding more links, there's a couple of nice plugins in WordPress, by the way, that allow you to actually change what your archive pages look like after you go past the first one or X pages. And you can say, like, you know, keep it normal on the first page where you can just say show 10, 10 posts on the first page. And then on all subsequent pages, you can show like 40, 50, which will really reduce the depth of your archives. And I mean, to be honest with you, like most people don't even use the archives to go past page one in general, if they even use the archive at all. So you can probably bump that up to like 100 posts per page. And if you've got a really big site, it's just a nicer way to keep things flatter. And it doesn't affect the UX on the first page. The UX can stay more or less as it is identical. So, Yeah, I like that. Um I like the idea of kind of knocking out, um, you know, uh, a lot more links on like the subsequent paginated pages. I mm -hmm. like that one versus like keeping it consistent of however many, but and saying, all right, page, let's just say two, go show 200, done. It's like, that. Oh, all right, that's yeah. not a bad idea. Yeah, it's nice. And, and as I say, there's some plugins and they're pretty easy. It's pretty easy to do. I'm not sure about the performance, whether there could be a little bit of a hit in that. You just need to watch for that. And then if you're really sort of hit there, you just catch. But generally speaking, it's just it's a nice pattern to use. Um, yeah. Is of course, 
go with this, then you can start to, to some extent, you can even use different templates for the different, for the initial page and sub pages. The initial page, you can turn into more of a hub page. You can add sort of information about the topic. You can add schema. You can add various things. And then in some pages, you can just have a very short snippet and, like I say, 100 links in each page. Um, yeah, it makes things work a bit better. If you can get, like there is, there you, can, you can get traffic in via the, the category pages if you set them up right. And certainly if you've got a big site and you've got plenty of page rank to push into them, uh, they're super. Like, um, like they're well known as topic pages in the newspaper industry and like some of the topic pages I work with like uh, work really well. Okay, I think um, we'll call that um, an answer for uh, Mark uh, X Quadros. Um, and I know when I click this button, um, it'll be thank you for watching time. Um, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, people like Roger Monty and Michael Martinez, Jesse McDonald, Richard Hearn, um, Tim Kappa, Masataki Wasa. Um, the people that um, answer uh, questions on our Dumb SEO Questions uh, Facebook uh, group. And, uh, of course, uh, you guys for, for turning up tonight. Uh, um, Richard Hearn, uh, um, we've missed you, mate, and I'm, I'm so glad to see you back again. Um, Micah Fisher-Kirshner and uh, Tim Kappa. Um, Masataki Wasa. Um, I hope I haven't missed anybody. Um, anyway, we'll be back uh, at the same time next week um, to do this uh, all again. But until then, um, it's uh, 